Hello, everyone. Hey, Brandon. Hey, how you doing? Good. And Deborah. Hi, Deborah. And there's Nicholas. Hey, Nicholas. Welcome. Uh, how you doing? Good. And there's a, there's our Debola. Hey, Deb. <laughs> Hi. Good evening, everyone. Or good wherever time zone you are, it is. <laughs> yeah, there could be some mornings here. Yeah, I don't know this group. Hey, mama. Yeah, it might be nice to have, um, you could put your name in the chat with where you're calling in from. That'd be fun to hear. And if you can be on video, we'd love to see your faces. All right. Nick's from your area of the woods there, Jim, in, in Chicago. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get started here. Um, let's see here. Liz, did you want to start us out? I would love to. Just with a couple of logistics. So turn off any of your notifications or dingy beeping devices, if you may. If you need to rename yourself, it looks like everyone's all set. I just renamed myself. So you can do that by going up in the upper right hand corner of your tile and clicking on the three dots. The format of this will be a discussion and I'll let Jim and Diana explain a little bit more about how they'd like to take questions, but do jump in and ask questions. I'll be monitoring the chat. So if it feels like you can't ask it, but you want to jot it down, just feel free to do that. And I'll grab those questions so that we can loop back to them. We expect that you all have read the coaches certification training FAQ page on our website, but I'll drop a link to that in the chat in just a moment, as well as a PDF download so that you can have it open if you want to follow along. And then last, the event this is gonna be recorded and we will be sharing it with the folks who can't make it here right now, um, just so that you all know that. And I will also send a link to the group that has registered on Eventbrite. So um, you'll be able to look at it again, watch it again, if you'd like to. Anything I'm missing? I think that's it. Awesome, <clears throat> take it away. Yeah, so why don't we um, just introduce who's in the room uh, so that uh, you all get to get a sense of who's here. So I'm with my best buddy and co-founder, Jim Dethmer. And uh, Hi, everybody. Jim and I are the co-leaders of the coaches training program. And then with us on our team, Deb Katz, who's here, she's one of our master trainers who's been with us since the beginning. Also, Bethany was on, she was one of the trainers this year as well. She's newer to our team. And she went through the coaches training program, not once, but twice. So uh, she can speak to that. Um, we've got Jenny here who supports Jim and I, and she's here to support this along with Liz who's here. And then I also see Anjani is here. And Anjani, you can wave there. Anjani um, just completed the coaches training program this year. So we're so grateful that you're here in case you all have questions, particularly for people who aren't on our team who did go through the program. So um, feel free to, if you want to direct a question specifically to Anjani or Bethany, who've been through the program, you're welcome to do that. So I think, um, I think Jim, we want to start out with a little bit of an overview. Does that seem like a sure. good place to start? 
Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a great place to start. So uh, what we're assuming is that you're interested in our coaches program where we learn what we call context coaching, which is a very particular way of being a coach in the world. And the way we build the program is there are two dimensions to it, what we call pillar one and pillar two. And pillar one is actually where we spend most of the time. Pillar one is supporting you to develop skill and actually in some cases mastery of living the 15 commitments. Our entire uh, concept is built on the idea that unless you can embody this practice, we call it be the being who can hold the field, then you'll never be successful as a transformational context coach. All that to say, we spend hours and hours and hours in all kinds of formats practicing things like candor, feeling feelings, uh, taking responsibility, playing on the drama triangle, giving and receiving feedback. Hours and hours in large group, small group, one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're not interested in a deep dive into your own consciousness, you do not want to sign up for this program because that's a huge part of what we're up to. And then the second part, what we call pillar two, is where we will actually guide you, teach you, mentor you into how to conduct a one-on-one -on -one coaching session using our modality. And it's actually, it begins by giving you a flow chart of how to conduct the coaching session. And then over the year, we'll explore every single component of what it means to coach somebody. And you will practice coaching each other, and then you will coach people that uh, come into your world, existing clients or friends, and you'll actually turn in videos throughout the course of the program, and you'll get feedback and evaluation on how you're doing as a coach. So again, there's pillar one, practicing living the 15 commitments, and pillar two, how to conduct a coaching session. That's kind of the big idea of what we'll do together for a year. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. If, did you say the definition of what we say for pillar one, Jim? I, I wasn't sure if you had said that about, can you be the being who can hold the field? Did I miss you say that? Yeah, I did. I mentioned be the being who can hold a field of transformation. So unless that beingness is in you, you'll, you'll be wonky unless, unless you know what it is to practice candor, unless you know what it is to feel feelings, unless you know what it is to be below the line, I mean, really below the line and really stuck in the drama triangle and have a playful, friendly relationship with that, you'll never be able to hold that space for a client. So that's what we mean. It's about being the being who can hold this field of transformation. Another part of that also is really helping you let go of all of your stories about what is good and bad and right and wrong from a righteous perspective so that you can get out of your own judgments about whether somebody should or shouldn't have done what they did is also a really big part of it. So we, we really get provocative around helping you let go of your stories um, about the way the world ought to be. And that's another big piece. Yeah, if you haven't read our uh, introduction to this or you haven't gotten the application yet, which I know some of you haven't, Diana just mentioned a really important word we want you to get, and that is that this program is provocative, <laughs> meaning we will intentionally provoke you, uh, poke you, tease you, play with you, especially around your most sacred attachments to your beliefs. So again, we describe this in detail in the application form, and we want you to know what you're jumping into. Uh, and provocative is a good word. <laughs> Playful, but also very provocative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so for example, you know, you might get assigned a learning partner and you can go steal somebody's learning partner by seducing them and telling them you're a better learning partner and maybe nobody wants to be the learning partner. And then what do you do with that? And 
Uh, and so um, getting feedback from the group of why they don't want to be your learning partner. So it's a it's a provocative thing to, you know, we tell people a lot, this is provocative. Everybody goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they get in the program and go, oh, you guys weren't kidding. So it's one of the things I most want you to know is it's edgy. It's definitely an edgy program where it's just going to push all of your discomforts. And one of the things we are really big fans of is getting uncomfortable, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable. And so if being uncomfortable isn't something you want to do, this would not be the program for you. <laughs> yeah, Anjani, I'm sure you could speak to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, um, this has been the most provocative thing I've done. And I've done a lot of things. And I've been in the CLG ethos for quite some number of years. And still, this has been the most provocative, edgy thing. And I'm so grateful for it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she stayed with us. So that's the <laughs> overview. And then what we'd like to do is just answer your questions. And there are, I want to say there are no dumb questions or silly questions. And we don't want to answer questions about the logistics, as we mentioned earlier. So if you've got specific questions about logistics, please read the handout that's in the chat, I think, if you haven't seen it already. So it looks like, um, is it Mia? Is that how you say your name? Let's see, can she, um, un, let me see, unmuting. I want to make sure everybody's unmuted who wants to. Are you checking on that, Liz? Yeah, everyone should be able to unmute. <clears throat> there you go. Go ahead with your question. You have your hand up, sweet. You've got the oh, little hand. I'm sorry. Oh my God. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, when got it. To, when you said to introduce ourselves in the chat, I thought that's what I was doing. And I'm super not tech savvy. So I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Well, here's the deal. You don't even have to put your hands up here. You can just read, you can just speak out your question as you want to go along. And Abby, it looks like you do have your hand up. So there must be a question from you. Yeah, I was in the, I just finished the four week course with actually, I, I believe it was Beth and Liz. No, well, I bet and someone else. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then, yeah, sorry. So I, I have never been trained to be a coach and I saw in the handout that it, this is not for beginning coaches. So that's my question. Like, that's like, if I don't have any other formation, I, I can't be el elig eligible. That's correct. What we're doing is we're distinct. There are lots of good coaching programs out there um, that we would recommend if you've never had any training in being a coach, where you learn to do important things like active listening and how to... Um, you know, set an agenda for a coaching session and how to do the basics of coaching. This is not that. We're assuming you already know something about coaching. We're assuming that you're already doing some coaching, either as a professional coach or you're a manager and you're coaching your team members. This is not a beginning course. So if you're interested in this, and you don't have any past experience or training, we tell you, I'll take a year and get some other training and some, some experience, and then come back and knock on our door and take a look at what we're doing. Okay, got it, thanks. Now, having said that, there might be some of, some of you who are naturally coaching as part of a role that you play. And uh, so there are some people who have gotten the program who did not have formal coaching training prior to coming to this program. So it's not an end all be all, but we'd want to understand, like Jim said, you naturally, you already are coaching as a mentor or as a leader in your organization. 
um, and that that's that's something that you have skill at and confidence at already. Deborah, it looks like you have a question. Yeah, you could unmute. I just got unmuted. So um, I just completed the book and um, I'm going to read it again. <laughs> so it's a lot to take in. And I just signed up for the intro program. My question is, how do uh, how did this start? Who who developed this? This is really fascinating. It's really fascinating. That's a great question. So um, Jim and I met uh, while we were both apprentices in the Hendricks Institute training coaches training program, mm -hmm. and we loved their work, and we also were. I would say we were both seekers for every other kind of modality out there that might support us in learning to be more present. And so we actually went to a lot of the same teachers and were inspired by a lot of the same people. And so we came together at some point here, I don't even know how long ago now, <laughs> maybe 10 years ago or longer and said, what do we think really was the best of the best of all the technology we've learned? What are the tools? And what do we think really makes and supports somebody in being a more present and conscious person? And so we pulled all of the content we had studied together and the 15 commitments came out of that, of these are our, what we think are the best tools. And so that's where that started. And um, we started out with a handout actually that we created and then that turned into a book. That's wonderful. And, we, and relevant to this program, we didn't actually start out intending to train and support coaches. We were just working with business leaders. But over the years, a number of people like yourselves, coaches and people who wanted to be coaches, came knocking at our door and said, your methodology uh, I find incredibly uh, useful, helpful, and good. So would you be willing to uh, show us how to do this? So we started by doing a three-day coaches intensive and did that for a number of years. And then we finally said, okay, we'll do this year-long intense program. And we actually love it. It's really, really fun. It's not the primary thing we do in the world. The primary thing we do in the world is what we're going to teach you how to do, which is how to coach leaders in organizations. But it's developed into something that we do every year now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this will be the sixth cohort that we will have trained for a year-long program. So we've got some reps under wow. our belt now, and uh, I've gotten lots of good feedback along the way. That's great. Wow. Great. And to Jim's point, we are going to be focusing on this is how we coach business leaders. So a lot of the people who are coming to us want to work in that world and are interested in breaking through and bringing these, what we would say maybe are some of these deeper principles into the business world is something that really excites us. And however, there are some people who come into this course who want to work with young uh, college students or want to use this with couples. So it doesn't have to be only business leaders, but that's how our language will be geared toward business leaders. I'm curious within that context, how much of this, if any, will be about like team dynamics, co-founder dynamics versus a one-on-one -on -one action? That's a great question. Zero will be on team dynamics and co-founder. Easy to understand. Thanks. <laughs> um, one, of the, one of our arguments is in order to really be a good team facilitator, you have to be a really good one-on-one -on -one coach because you're going to end up doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching when you're facilitating a team. Yeah. So there is sort of a natural progression that happens there with that. But we have in the past held a course for people who graduated from this program. We've done a, I don't know, what was that three days, Jim, where we did something where we did something on how we facilitate mm -hmm. in more of a group dynamic. And so I imagine we'll do that again, but that would be a follow-up to this training. Thanks. Other questions? I do. Hi, Diana. You had mentioned that, um, that the coaching's having coaching background and experience, but maybe not actually having the certificate. So would that be part of the application process where we'd be able to talk to someone to know if that's a gap or not? Is that how that's decided? 
Um, I think actually while in the, in the filling out of the application would be where we would learn whether or not we feel like you have skills or background. Okay. So you can write up there, like if you don't have a formal coaches certification training, what do you have that you believe makes you ready for this course? Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Others, what questions do you have? Go ahead, Ross. I think I okay, said. Okay. I look like Mia had her hand up too. I didn't want to jump in there. You look like you're right next to me, Mia. Um, so thank you. Um, first of all, I'm super inspired. I I really, really, you know, similarly wave this book around just because it's just such a really, really clear reflection of some, you know, what I now called this thing called a learnivore, which is just somebody who loves to learn and then share it, you know, and um, and so anyway, I really have found. The, the the depth of course it seems like there's if there's a slider for each of the commitments there's sort of a I don't know if it's infinite I don't I don't know where you guys put that end point but I I have this sense of like there's probably a sweet spot with respect to each of the commitments that would be good that we were at at the point of enrolling in this thing and I was just curious if you guys wouldn't mind you know I'm new to newer to this so I'm not sure if you guys have a way of talking about it but I just um I'm really curious, like, what would be a sweet spot, you know, like, if I consider myself very, very good at one of the commitments, is that a reason why, I don't know, whatever that means, I'm not, it's not like, it's like, somebody told me that I'm really good at yoga, it's kind of like, great, you know, like, I don't know, like, is there a competition, you know, it's like, it's for something that's an inner practice, it's kind of hard to know, you know, how you fit in, so I just, I don't know, it's a weird question, but I wanted to ask it if it's, if that's all right. Well, we're going to be diving deep into these commitments, just like Jim was describing in your own way. So even if you don't have much mastery, you're going to get a lot of mastery over the year of practicing these things. So I don't know, what would you say about that, Jim? Because I don't have a sense we're looking for people to have a certain level. I think we're mostly open to people who are so open to learning, mm -hmm. who are willing to learn and say, all right, let me let me lean in, push my edges, get uncomfortable and learn how to be more masterful in each of these areas. Yeah. Awesome. Any other thoughts you have, Jim? Yeah. One of the things we look at in your application, we'll ask you, what exposure do you have to this work? Meaning the work of the conscious leadership group. And for example, and this be perfectly great but if you said well i got the book a month ago and i read the book and i love the book and i've read it a second time and underlined it and now i want to get in the coaches program we might very likely say to you uh, like i did somebody earlier pause for a year and go do something else go to an intro class uh get one of our coaches to coach you um join a forum uh you know uh do a book club so that you so that your first exposure isn't jumping into the deep end because we don't offer anything that is deeper than our coaches program so again you don't the biggest thing is that you're curious and open and want to learn and you're you're willing to toddle and mess up and learn and mess up but if if you're real new and not a lot of exposure we might give you other ways to go get some exposure before you jump into this. Yeah, yeah, follow on, okay? Can I just follow on with that? Yeah, um, yeah please. Um, so I love that because at the beginning, you know, it's like you're just, there's a lot to learn. And, and I would, I don't want to like, I don't know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really clear how to talk about my skill set in this arena. It's kind of interesting. Like, I got a five on the Enneagram, you know, it's like an interesting, like, I didn't get that, by the way, I'm seven or eight. But anyway, the, um, you know, the experience of like talking to a group of people who are really self-aware is I'm just having this self-conscious moment, but, but I was feeling like, um, I was feeling like there are a lot of these skills that feel very, very, um, native, not native, meaning like I got it, but like very deeply ingrained in my, like the reason I'm here on this call is because I truly want to get around people who are practicing in their lives at this level that is presented in this book. And it's not common in my life as much as I have sought out phenomenal people and I have an incredible network of people uh, you know as an entrepreneur and whatever but I have not found this work to be available and I've really dug I mean I like I think I put in my 
I thought the application was due last week, so I'm not sure exactly which thing we're in, but like I, I think I like rushed to get it in by April, March 1st or whatever it was, but was that true? Was that, or is this a different thing altogether? Okay, good. Well, anyway, so, so all of us have replied or we're just still finding out. I'm just, I'm so curious. There's a, that we just, we extended the date, I believe. Ah, oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. I was, I was like, cause I was still wondering if I got mine in on time. So I was like inside of that, like, okay. So a lot of confessions here, but the, yeah, really what I was getting at was just the, um, was more this idea of, is there a point where you would say it's maybe not that necessary to take this program and how would one assess that? I don't, does that make, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, like if you're brand new, then that makes sense. And if you're in the sweet spot and then there's this place where you might feel like actually kind of just keep rocking the practice or whatever. So I don't know. That's just another question. Yeah, this is a great question because sometimes we have people who really want to be in the program because they want to be around other people who are practicing this. Yeah, exactly. And we would say, then we don't think this is the program for you because there is going to be a lot of attention on really building a lot of detailed mastery around how to coach. Mm -hmm. And so we've had some people drop out of the program because they realize I actually really don't care as much about that part. I really wanted to just be in the pillar one practice. And so we say, we think there are other places for you to go to get that and that you're going to get frustrated with how much we're going to be focusing on the details of your coaching. Yeah. Yeah. Others. Another question. Another question. Um, for those of us that already submitted our application, if we learn something or think we hear something and realize I didn't really mention or address that, here's something tonight. Is it too late to go back and update or are we kind of locked in when we send it at the uh, original send? Um, I think you could um, send something off to us and we can add that into your application let me see why you ever thought about that liz yeah i think you're welcome to send an addendum to me and i think you received my email address when i sent you instructions for the video upload yeah cool so Thank yeah you. and if you end up doing it in the google doc itself some of them you can edit then just shoot me an email to let me know okay okay thanks Thank you. Jenna, I saw your hand, or Jenna and Mia, maybe both of you. One of you want to go? You're muted, Mia. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, what kinds of people do you typically attract to um, to your program? And I ask this because. I basically, I consider, I, so in my field of work, I deal with energy healing. And so when it comes to any kind of healing or um, I guess progression and who it is that we want to be and evolve to be, my work is completely etheric. So I'm wondering if, um, yeah, I guess I'm wondering what kind of people you typically attract. And I guess I'm giving myself a disclaimer about the type of healing and coaching that I um, work with right now. And if that would be, you know, some kind of a fit, because for me, um, it's sort of like a fast forward button dealing with people's energy, or I guess if it was in context coaching, um, terminology, I'd consider it more like subconscious. Um, so did that question, did I spit that out? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Well, uh, So let me just assume some things from what you're saying. Our program is not populated normally by a preponderance of people who are energy healers or who deal in what I would call alternative healing modalities. We're deeply supportive of all those things. And uh, there, there might be people in the program who have those as tools in their toolkit, but this is not that. So what we'd say to you, again, I'm just assuming some things here, which might not be fair assumptions. If that's your modality and that's the modality you want to use, what we're bringing is a different thing. Now your ability to read energy, be with energy, move energy would be useful, but we would ask you to use it 
very much as a coach when you're with us for the year you're with us in the um, system we'd be teaching you. So we'd ask you to use, to subject your uh, system to our system for the year. And again, there, you know, usually out of 20 or so people who come into the program, there might be two or three who have a modality like that or a different modality, but it's not the preponderance of people who are in the group. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it did. I, yeah, I was generally curious what kind of people you attracted. Um, and then you, right. I guess I mentioned the energy healing aspect, not under the assumption that, you know, it was going to be specifically incorporated with what I do more leveraging what I, what I already do. Yeah. Beautiful. I would so say, the, go ahead, Jim. I was going to say the program again, generally is made up of, um, maybe a third people who are leadership coaches already, life coaches, but working with a high functioning person, executive coaches, people like that. A third people who are like in an HROD function in an organization, and maybe a third who are managers or CEOs who want to learn how to coach people on their team. Some rough proportion like that would give you a description of who's in the room. Okay. Yeah. And probably... I would say that's pretty accurate, but maybe closer to 50% of the people are coaching. Yeah. 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 And specifically, a lot of people who are interested in coaching in the business world, but for whom they really think context coaching is the way to go. And they want to, they, they realize they've been coaching for years and there's something that's that they know doesn't always work because they don't address their client's context first. And that's what they want to focus on now. I want to add here. Can I do that, Jim, Diana? Please. Um, one of the things that comes up for me in this is to be clear that uh, just to highlight what Jim said is we, we'd even ask you to suspend while you're doing co context coaching We'd even invite you to suspend the rigor of your practice while you're doing coach context coaching. So if you have a context client, you're not going to do both. You're not going to do context coaching and whatever else you do. You're just going to practice and get some data and some reps in just this modality while you're doing context coaching. And that's great. And Again, we're saying this phrase as though we have a shared nomenclature here. Context coaching is a technical term for us. It means that in the opening couple of minutes of a coaching session, you ask the person what the issue is they want to explore. They're going to share the content of their issue for two minutes. And then that's about it with content. From there on out, you're talking about, are you above or below the line? Can you accept yourself of being where you are? Are you willing to shift? This is radically different because many of you are really good coaches, like you're a subject matter expert, or you know how to give people great advice or come alongside them and of course offer empathic listening, but then give them five possible ways they could change what they're doing. We don't do any of that. And this is gonna be a shock to your system if you don't fully grasp what context coaching is. We basically say that if you don't address the person's context, whether they're in presence or reactivity, whether they're above the line or below the line in drama or in trust, if you don't address that, the content of their issue will just keep recycling. But it's really important that you understand that because it is a different thing that we're inviting you to play with for a year. Yeah, no advice no, no tricks up your sleeve kind of a thing. It really is about coming back and holding a presence and challenging a lot of challenging where people say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm available to feel my feelings, but well, how about the anger? And how about right now? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. So, you know, being able to really bring that kind of awareness to your clients and ask them to stay, to start to take a look at where are they unwilling to really address their context is a big part of what you'll be learning. 
Yeah, like Anjani's on the call, you can see her, she spoke. Anjani had a, has and had a serious executive coaching business, like serious, big time, and is a really, really good executive coach. And for a year, we basically <laughs> played with her about suspending all of those things that she can do in her sleep that have helped her pull together a cadre of great clients that she coaches and she makes a wonderful living doing it and all that. And we've said, okay, that's great. And none of that works here. So we're playing a whole different game for a year with you, which at times she wanted to shoot us in the head and, uh, <laughs> and we deeply love each other. So, you know, it's real important you get that. Okay, I see some more hands here. Alana, you've got your hand up. Thank you. Um, that was great listening to you describing context coaching because that actually is the way that I coach now, but I do give them up to three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got forms and everything I do with individual. I do that with group process and everything. Um, so I actually have a couple of questions. In terms of the things that we had to have done ahead of time, your other courses ahead of time, do we have to have done those by the time we send in the application or can we send in the application and do those later? You won't be able, I think some of those, you won't be able to do them in time. So we'll go ahead and say, bring your application in and then sign up for the next thing you can get into to get an experience of us. Okay, great. Uh, another question I have is, we're talking about coaching business leaders, which is what I do now, but this is, you know, a different kind of thing. I mean, so I was actually working with a group of entrepreneurs yesterday and somebody had the book out on the table. So I know that people are aware of this. I'm wondering as part of the program, is there any conversation about the business side of this and how this is discussed or anything like that? What do you mean the business side of this? The, the business side of us as in being in the business of coaching. The oh, got it. There are um, some people on our team who will volunteer at some of the events to have like a dinner on how do you source more clients, things like that. Or um, some of the groups come together to talk about like how do they onboard a client or how do they decide on payment? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, and even how do you speak about it to clients, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say those things. So we don't cover that, uh, but those things get talked about amongst the participants and they gather in those conversations for those who are interested. Okay, great. Yeah. And one other question that I have is I saw, I've seen on your application a lot of the work about emotions and et cetera. Um, I've been working with Core Energetics, which it sounds like there's similarities. Is that just completely coincidental or is that part of the basis for the work that you've done also? I don't think we know about core energetics, so it'd be just a coincidence. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and if they're saying things similar to us, I'd like to know about them. Yeah. You know, we're, we're interested in learning from anybody who's got some. So, I'd love to hear about that. Brandon, you're next. Okay, I unmute. Yeah. I just firstly want to acknowledge that I'm feeling a bit edgy <laughs> around what was cool. being communicated around the, um, that was actually my question coming in. I was debating if I was going to raise my hand, but it was around the flow chart on how to conduct the session and in the looseness around that, just based on, you know, you invest and you have these different modalities and you kind of pull from these different modalities when you're in the moment with the client. So my question around that was, you know, and I, I made a notation of it is, is how loose is the flow chart? But I believe you guys have kind of answered that from a place of really um, fully embodying the experience of, of the setup that you have and kind of maybe downloading or embracing that and releasing or pausing some of the other modalities and some of the other tools in the toolkit. Is that, is that accurate? That is accurate. We are going to want you to be tight with the motto, like to the T on everything. And we're going to be grading you on that. And so we say for the year we are with us, we want you to follow the script. We want you to go exactly how we do it. And then after that, if you want to then be more of an artist and take our model and riff it with other things you've got, fantastic. Okay. But it's going to be very tight. We're going to keep you to our framework. Yeah. You're, you're going to spend a year 
learning scales and playing very little jazz. Mm. Then when you graduate, we are excited about you doing whatever you're called to do and bringing whatever your gift is to the world, however you want to bring it. But it's a little bit like, if you've ever done a, uh, like a Goinka 10 day uh, Vipassana retreat. I remember when I did that and, you know, right at the beginning they say, okay, whatever you've done, all you, it's a meditation retreat. Whatever yeah. you meditators have done all your life, don't do any of that while you're here. <laughs> And I think half the people would go, what are you talking about? You know, I've been doing whatever forever and ever. Not only that, you couldn't practice yoga while you were there for 10 days. You couldn't exercise. They take everything away and then say, you're going to just be devoted to this for 10 days. And we're a little bit like that mm -hmm. regarding your coaching modalities. Mm -hmm. I have an additional question um, in distinction to what you guys just shared. And I believe you, I, I believe I heard you mention that this is the sixth cohort. This is the sixth group. Yes. So has there been any, you know, changes within this flow as, as there's growth and there's learnings that go on? Is there, has there been possibilities for each one where there's been shifts and changes or is it pretty, has it been pretty, pretty dialed in from the very beginning and there hasn't been too many tweaks around it? I would say both. I think it actually was pretty dialed in from the beginning. Um, and on some levels, some, those certain things haven't changed, but we have asked for feedback every year and we take in all the feedback and implement as much of it as we can. Um, so it's usually more on the details, not on the overall structure. Yeah, the, the basic structure, the four questions of conscious leadership, which if you've done anything with us, you've learned these. Where are you? Can you accept yourself for being where you are? Are you willing to shift your consciousness? And how will you shift? Those haven't changed. But then the things that hang off that, we've clarified, tweaked, um, added to over time. But especially the last, the last two cohorts or so, it's gotten pretty dialed in. OK. Is we it all right if I? Go ahead. Sorry, Diana. Please continue. I was going to say one change we're making this year that's new is we usually meet four times in a year. We're meeting three times in a year instead, and we're going to be adding on a little bit of time to those three times, but then we're going to have two hour monthly calls. And that's going to be new where we're going to be doing, delivering more of the training in those times. Um, some of the, some of the details of the content. So we're excited about trying a slightly different structure out. Okay. I have one more I just more want to say one. I want to say one more thing before, and then I want to hear your question. We're really stressing, you know, do our thing for you or do our thing for you. I just want to tell you of the whatever, 100, 150 people have gone through this idea for the year, do our thing. This has not been a source of complaint. I joked with Anjani, but you will be spending so much time in relational interaction with each other around practicing these things that you, your deal won't be, wait a minute, I learned this and this thing and I want to be able to use that. That just isn't going to be an issue. You'll, you, nobody raises that as an issue. There are other complaints about the program over the years, but that isn't one of them. Never. No, we stress that. Yeah. Or people being bored. <laughs> That's never. No. no, people or people yeah, feel like they want more to learn. Go ahead, Brandon. What's your next question? Yeah, and, and this one this one may be kind of spatial, so I don't even know if it's really, you know, answerable, but I'll just put it out there to see if it may land. But it just came to my to my mind, just the, the question around, like in both of your experiences, obviously there's 15 commitments and that's kind of the framework of the methodology of the of the book and the training. But is there one specific, you know, or that you have noticed in your experiences of, of teaching this, of you know, working with organization of working with coaches, is there one, and maybe I'll say two, you know, just to light it up a bit, particular commitments that you notice frequently more and more people find the most challenging or find the most, most, um, I don't know that, that there tends to be a, an even maybe larger capacity of, of growth or leaning into. Well, we, put the commitments in order of what we believe are the most important ones. So we say the first two are the cornerstones. Those are the ones everybody's got to get 
And ever, all of the other commitments basically are variations on those two cornerstone commitments. And the program is gonna focus on you getting mastery of the first six commitments because that's what we bring into organizations are those first six. And so a lot of the model will be around just you focusing on those with your clients. And then toward the end of the year, we have you riff off into more of those commitments, but they do get challenging, uh, especially being the source of your own control, security and approval can be a really big challenge. And we don't usually bring those into the business world. Um, and so we mostly focus on the foundations one through six. And we think they're all, you know, after those cornerstones, they're all equally important. And a lot you, of the practice we'll do with you um, will be on those first six commitments. In mm -hmm. other words, we'll create all kinds of opportunities for you to reveal and not conceal, to be candid with each other. Right. Like at the very first retreat, the first dinner, we might have you in small groups and you sit down at dinner and we ask you to go around and tell what you're attracted to in each person and what you have an aversion to. First dinner, first night. I have an aversion to this. I have an attraction to this. That's what I mean. We're jumping in, practicing, revealing, and not concealing, because most of us have so many things we don't say. And we're going to create an environment where you are lovingly prodded to reveal yourself. Another one is feeling feelings. Like, you know, when we go into the business world, we work mostly with anger, fear, sadness, and joy, a little bit with creative energy. In this program, gang, we will work a ton with sexual energy. Now we say this in the application, we'll ask you to be very clear about your boundaries, how you wanna be in relationship around your own body, you create a safe space for yourself, all that. We'll ask you to be very clear if you have an intimate partner or partners with them about what you're doing, but then we really will encourage you to feel your sexual energy. Because we believe that unless you get that pipe unclogged along with anger, along with fear, along with sadness, along with joy, you'll never be a fully alive flowing being. And most of the people who come to you underneath whatever their presenting issue is, they just want to be more alive, mm -hmm. more flow. So that's what I mean about we jump and, and Commitment number uh, six around impeccability and integrity. We will be so uh, ruthless, lovingly ruthless and playful, but ruthless with you about how you are with your agreements, making and keeping agreements. Are you impeccable? Are you slippery? What do you do around that? And that's the kind of stuff that we'll be playing with. And people years. have been removed from the program for not keeping their agreements. And that is one of the and that's, that's not uncommon that that happens at least one person each year. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Jenna, how about you? Hi, thank you so much for doing this q and I've loved listening to everything that you're saying. And I actually found you, Diana, because I follow Tim Ferriss and I listened to the podcast um, that you were on his show. So I feel like it was meant to be that I heard that. And uh, my question for you is, you guys are still sort of in early stages, I guess I would say for, um, you know, you said you had six cohorts. And my question really is more about you, what you've learned about yourselves in sort of flipping it and teaching it as opposed to living it and doing it with um, business leaders, what you've learned from the six cohorts for yourself. I've... Um for myself what well, we've learned about ourselves is that about yourselves Jenna? yeah about yourselves yeah and kind of flipping the work to coaching coaches well uh i mean everybody's work in the coaches training program is my work so what i love about doing the work is it's just oh that's my issue oh that's my issue so I get coached right along the way with everybody else. So I would say I just keep growing with all of my clients, whether they're my the leaders I'm coaching or the or the um, coaches I'm supporting in learning how to do these things. It's all the same for me. It's it's never ending learning. And um, I think you know I'm a big fan of playing. And I I think for me it's like how do we keep playing with all this? Because I think we learn so much faster when we're playing. And how do we play with all the sacred cows? 
you know, like if you're an activist in this group, oh my God, we're just going to, you know, really mess with your activism and all your stories about, you know, the way the world ought to be. And um, so, you know, that I just keep learning for myself how to hold all of it more lightly. The first thing that came to me for me was um, all of my life, I love concepts and I love words and I love articulating concepts in words that I think can be really useful. And I think what I'm learning more and more every year we do this is actually how unimportant all my words and concepts are. Like really, that it really is a beingness that, that is beyond words. Now we still use a lot of words and we still do all that, but I just see more and more how the thing I've loved the most, most of my life is actually not that important. <laughs> and you'll learn it's really important because his articulation is super clarifying and everybody loves it. So it's a yes and over here for it. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. I want to chime in on this one. Um, Jenna, if you were to know me, you'd know I use this coaching program. I use the hell out of it. Like this is for me, the deep end of the pool that I use very intentionally, all of you who, who join it to show me the edges of my current blind spots, the edges of my familiar pathways, the edges of my own limitations. And I'll use this program and I'll use all of you ruthlessly to love all those limitations and dissolve, watch them dissolve. I love that. I think all of the things that you guys said is sort of, um, you know, I think what most of us are probably looking a lot to get out of it and sort of pushing those boundaries. So um, it was just nice to hear from your perspective, sort of what you've gotten out of um, coaching coaches. So thanks so much. Have a great night. You're welcome. Tracy, how about you? Hi again. So I currently don't live in the US, I live in New Zealand. Um, and I'm wondering with other people that have come from other countries, how do they, how have you found conscious leadership intersects with other cultures? Um, we haven't had, uh, I think most of the people who've come are from Europe uh, so far. And we've, we've been teaching this with other um, leaders in all different kinds of cultures. And there are some differences, but for the most part, it's pretty universal. And we're always learning, you know, we don't really have a word for that, or that doesn't quite make sense here or something like that. But for the most part, that's, it's, it's been pretty um, friendly to most cultures. Oh, lovely. Um, and how about the whole bit about the traveling coming back and forth? Like, what would be your number one hint for those coming from overseas to be present and ready? Um, Most people training? come a couple of days ahead of time so they can get acclimated so they don't have um, jet lag. And, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, one of the things we say is we're not going to alter the times at which we ask the groups to meet. And so some of them are getting up in the middle of the night for the attendance of um, our group meetings or for their pod um, calls. And so we ask that people who are joining the program are really comfortable being up at night if that's what's required for those couple of hours. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't imagine that we're going to have to go virtual, but if we do, people, because we, we had to do that in past cohorts because of COVID. And so we had, you know, French, somebody from France, like up all through the night and having to attend. And so we are expecting that if people are going to join, that they're willing to work out, work that out. And uh, that can be challenging for some. We'll, we'll actually make that a big deal with anybody who's non-US. Yeah. So go ahead. We there. I think we actually got to one point one year where we said we won't accept anybody who isn't in the United States, just because we had experiences where it wasn't friendly to people. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't friendly to their nervous system and then they also couldn't be contributive to the collective like they wanted to be 
Mm. Now we've had somebody from Australia participate. And this year we had a couple of people, uh, Germany, uh, UK. Uh, but we really do say you got to be willing to operate on our time zones and not like you got to be able to do that and have that be friendly to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and we'll really want to have that conversation because pretty soon, I think in the next couple of years, we'll be offering, you know, like a Eurasia training and it'll be for people in Europe, Asia, stuff like that. I think we'll be, we're getting so much demand that we'll probably segment that out and start doing it, but not this coming year. Yeah, okay. I can easily come back to the States a couple of days early. Good. <laughs> not, yeah. Not a problem. Bring it on. <laughs> Karen. Karen, what, <laughs> what's you. your question, Karen? I um, so coming back to a theme that you've already shared. So I just wanted to clarify. It makes a lot of sense that within the context of our coaching, in the coaching program, we're only using these tools, right? That totally makes sense. What I was trying to understand is if we already have clients with whom we have been doing some content coaching or you know, whatever, I remember we joked around about you can't be a little pregnant. So either you're, you know, you're doing context coaching or you're not doing context coaching. But if there are other client relationships that we have is the request that those also change, for, but it's, or it's just within the kind of context, no pun intended within, of just, this context. You know? Yeah. So we're just saying when you coach each other in the program, and Got when it. you record your coaching sessions for us, they all Got have it. to be tight, like the scales. Perfect. But then, okay. you know, the rest of your life, you're just doing what you're doing. That's none of our okay. business. Perfect. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure that I got yes. it. Thank you so much. Good question. Jason. Yeah. So I, I know when you talk about being above the line and below the line, you're talking like, like uh, to me versus um, by me states. And I'm just curious, and I, I'm guessing that's where you spend almost all time in a client context too, in that kind of distinction. Is that where the program is going to spend all its time too? Or are we going to the through me and as me parts of that model as well? It will be to me to buy me. That will be our focus. And because most of your clients, that will be a huge deal if they can even do that on a regular consistent basis. So we won't really focus much on through me. Um, and again, in the past, we've held a through me event uh, for coaches. Uh, you know, we may or may not do that, but that's not the focus of this program. We will do, um, if we do it the way we've always done it, and a lot of this happens spontaneously, but we will do some through me and as me meditations and experiences with all of you together. Um, there's some people who join in the program. Diana's husband, Matt, um, leads some very, very powerful um, through me, as me kind of meditations. We, so we'll do some of that, but we're not doing any training on how to support people to live in through me and as me. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, the other thing we're looking for is we're looking for participants who are really excited about giving their fellow classmates a lot of feedback and that they're available for a lot of feedback. So we are interested in you going, hey, I got something for you. Here's some feedback for you. And that that's, uh, that's something that you're excited about because you want to get give and receive world-class feedback to help you learn and grow. So that's something that we're looking for. And particularly, you know, uh, feedback in which you're appreciating one another, but also feedback that's very challenging to one another. Anybody else on the team have anything else you wanna say, Deb or um, Bethany or Anjani, any other things you think we've missed or? I also have one more question to throw in from someone who wrote in. Great. It is, so what kinds of benefits can I expect to have to, hold on, let me see this, to put into practice with my clients? Like what kinds of things can I take away from this training? 
Well, specifically, you're going to take away really understanding how to do context coaching. And we believe that that, and then, and also how you can be the field that supports the transformation of your clients. So those two key things, our experiences make you a really popular coach. Uh, And so uh, we think it's a good investment. And especially if you want to be able to translate these kinds of concepts over to the business world, you're going to have much more confidence in being able to do that. I'd also say for most people who enter this program, because you're humans, there's some place in your life where you're currently stuck, some place in your life where you're not really facing, feeling, and dealing with your life, and you will during this program. Yeah. Yeah. And you. so I want to say this, you will be a different human a year after you start this program. I think that is a huge gift to your clients because your clients are stuck as well. And the greatest gift you can give them is your growing unstuckness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll weigh in here. I mean, <laughs> fundamentally a different person, fundamentally. And the through me, a question that somebody asked, I experienced many spontaneous through me experiences that I make up changed my life. And it was through this program. Someone else asked a question of what do I get out of this? And um, something around the lines of, do we help each other with our businesses? And that's another thing, right? You have such range of people who join this program. And so everyone's in groups helping each other. Um, and not helping each other like with their business, but helping each other find their genius, helping each other find what this means to them, what they want to go do in the world. Um, the program for me ended just what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And I'm already in conversation with multiple people from my cohort of how to keep things going. What do we want to put into the world? What do we want to do together? Um, so it's a really amazing playground. And it's, it's a community that you end up having, I think, for the rest of your life of people who love you sometimes and see you sometimes more than you can see yourself and won't let you off the hook. So I, you know, (laughs) if that's not a testimonial, I don't know what (laughs) it's. I've got something too. Um, I remember we closed our last cohort a few weeks ago and I stood up and I said Diana like wow these containers that are getting co-created like these containers you create it's a deeply relational container and when you're deeply relational there will be triggers (laughs) you're basically signing up to get triggered for a year (laughs) so that you can work through your stuff and use the model over and over again for your liberation so that you're you have more access to be the being So you're signing up to go below the line by being deeply relational with a whole group of people for a year. It's messy. Uh, (laughs) That's good. That's a great, great expression. (laughs) So uh, I think, and I'll stick around for a few minutes afterwards, if there's just a burning question that you didn't get answered, but we wanted to honor our hour long process here to keep our time agreement. So we'll formally shut it down here and um, look forward to seeing some of you in the program this fall. And uh, um, please reach out if there are other questions that you don't get answered today because you got to jump off. All right. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Is it okay if I jump in with my question, Diana? Yeah, and Jim and I are still here. Oh, great. Thanks, guys. Um, well, it's a, the words that floated through, I'm trying to kind of translate, and I'm not sure. I was kind of thinking of Jim, like wordness, um, because the words that came through were how effective is the program? But then I found myself, which is an interesting question in itself, just sort of like what is it seeking to be effective at? And then the other side of it is uh, essentially is how is the program effective? And I, and I have to say, I, one lesson or the answer is, is that it is through using the tools that have been codified, learned, digested, up-leveled, all the things that you've been doing. 
but I was just curious if you wouldn't mind just bragging on yourselves for a minute because I'm, I'm really fired up on what you're doing. So it's like, a, you know, it's good, good audience. Right. But like, I'm just, I'm just so curious, like kind of like that question before, who have you become in this process? But more like if you were to just codify in some sense, and even from the grads, if there's any way to weigh in, kind of what is this program doing? In other words, like, how is it effective, right? You know, and then how would you measure that effectiveness, if that makes any sense? Well, I, I'm going I'm to switch it and not answer your question yet. I want to give okay, you good. some feedback. So already what I get about you is there's one who's not yet fully willing to relax into the unknown. Hmm. Who's willing to trust something that he doesn't have to intellectually understand, but he feels it in his body and in his heart. He doesn't have to know anything except go or don't go. And I just imagine there's one in there that will know more when he slows down, like way down. I think your pace, your essence pace is much slower than your running. And I think if you did that, you wouldn't necessarily need to answer to your question. And I'm still happy to give it to you if you'd like. Oh, I accidentally muted myself somewhere in that. Um, thank you for the gift of feedback. Um, and it's there's so much truth in that. Slow down. And that I think what you what you're noticing is inside of my excitement that I get kind of like excited about ideas, excited about a chance to learn. Um, it's not, I'm actually like super good with the mystery. I love, I'm like, we have this thing we call the masters of uncertainty and it's basically this string of golden dice and it's all about celebrating the unknown. And it's obviously hard for all of us, right? Like we say we like surprises, but we like the surprises we want. So, you know, the, you know, so I'm very aware that like, yeah, it's, I'm inside, I work in the bike space and, and I have this idea I've been playing with called shifting gears, which is really about moving from that granny gear to the big ring. You know, if you, everybody knows if you've been on a mountain bike before, it's like, that effort, high pace, you know, that's me in that gerbil kind of mode. And then there's this slower, like, and I think I'm just so, I, so what the question that came up for me, and I'm not sure if I'll ask it any more clearly this time, but the, I guess it's like, it's like, it's a weird question because in some sense I want you to say, why do you think this works? Not because I need that answer. I'm just so curious, like from your perspective, in on it. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like you have this overview to me, like from having written this book and espouse these principles in a way that are for me, like you mentioned edgy, we have a term we call edge running, right? It's like that notion of putting oneself at the edge, like mycelium, pushing something forward. And I feel like this work is like that. And so I find myself like, I'm, I signed up, I'm like, whatever, you know, like if I get in, then I'll do it, you know, that'd be great. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm so, I'm, I've just really bought in and I'm, and I'm also just curious because I kind of want to get a, I want to, I don't really need to even confirm it. I've already confirmed that you guys are legitimate folks. I'm just so curious in this and I feel kind of now a little verklempt in this sort of overstatement thing. But I think the the thing that I'm trying to get at is I was just so curious in a sense, like, like a meta, not meta analysis, but it's like a meta review of how this year long journey creates that massive transformation in humans. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm just so, that is a, just a deep, deep curiosity of mine. And I'm really excited to be at the deep end of the pool and people keep talking about that. So that's all good. Anyway, that was my attempt to reframe and hopefully slow down my question though it may not have made any more sense. So thank you. <laughs> Ross, I notice as you're speaking, I can feel my heart rate going faster. I can actually feel some of my adrenaline coming up as I really loop with you. I can feel myself getting faster. And every time you say the word curious, I get like this little taste of fear. Hmm. And I wonder if every time, if you can flag that for yourself, every yeah. time you say the word curious, check to see, are you scared? Like, is, is there a little fear that's running? My story is that part of your questions is, is trying to figure something out so you don't feel scared. Hmm. 
Well, thank you. I mean, there's no question I am scared of committing to a year long program that costs what this cost and takes what it's like. It's like this being introduces this sort of like you're committing to this thing you might get kicked out of, you know, like all the frame is like, you know, you might not be able to hold on. So I I'm, I'm, will definitely own like a little bit of white knuckle. Thank you for yeah. that feedback. Yeah. And can you accept yourself for just getting a little scared, being a little oh, scared? Okay. This is a totally okay place to be scared, man. If you're going to be scared somewhere, be scared here. Mm. Yeah. yeah I, I get it. A little bitter better in there. <laughs> He's going, you know. Mm -hmm. We just want to welcome the one who's scared. Mm -hmm. Really welcome him. He can be as scared as he wants. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you all. I feel like so much richness came from it. <laughs> I, I really, I guess I'll say the last thing that I am so grateful for is the um, permission, if it's, if that's a thing, because um, obviously we can permiss ourselves, but like in the sense of the book and these practices, um, giving ourselves permission to feel and to offer feedback, receive feedback, um, but really there's something about this work that is so important, you know, and that we're learning it together in this practice context, you know, it's really just seems to be like a fractal. So thank you. You just answered your, your question. There you go. <laughs> your, passion, your passion is um, really intoxicating to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the way you just communicated in the last 30 seconds, can you feel how you dropped into a different place and you're speaking mm. from a different? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fully. No, it's so cool. It's so cool. It's a really good feedback. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the part of you. I think I've heard you say four times now, I have this word, we have this word. Mm. I can feel a partner in me, in you, <laughs> who comes up with concepts, frames, wants to do that. And I love that part of me. And I love that part of you. And there's another one that you just rested back into mm -hmm. that already knows everything you're asking <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah thank you for the, the the pointer to life visioning as well absolutely like uh, so yeah cool. oh, sweet thank you guys <laughs> yeah you're thank welcome. everybody for hanging <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's great everybody just gets to get a taste of what what it's like in the program just like mm -hmm. that there you go cherry <laughs> on top <laughs> All right. Anybody else burning? Can I, can, just can, I ask, can I ask another? Um, thank. I loved watching that. That was really fascinating. Thank you so much. Um, so one of the first, I think the first question in the bigger group was a woman who was asking about, you know, as a first time coach. And I don't know if this is something that would come through in my application. I wasn't really quite sure if um, applying right now was like the best fit, um, the right time. So I've been working as um, a therapist for almost 15 years. And a lot of what I do is really, I really don't even like calling myself a therapist because I do much more of like a coaching kind of relationship. Um, you know, I, I would say it is definitely, well, actually I would say it's a mix probably of content and context. Um, but not formal, you know, so I, I feel like my question is a little bit different than the first person. And, you know, if you have advice on the questions to kind of ask myself to figure out if this is the right time um, versus just kind of going ahead and applying and putting all of my experience and um, everything of that nature into the application, is there, you know, any insight you have on how I can sort of tease apart if if it, if it feels like the right time. Well, the pillar one question I would ask you is, are you fully alive? So that's a great question because I feel like the last, uh, probably actually right around COVID, when COVID hit, um, I don't know if I would have described it that way. Am I like asking myself if I'm alive? But that's essentially the process I started to go through. Mm -hmm. Like, who am I? What am I? Do what am I doing here? 
what's in my heart of hearts of who I am and who I want to be because we had so much time. Um, and um, I feel like that is hap like that process has been happening for me a little bit over time where like I like feel like I kind of wake up in a moment um, and have like deep under like a much deeper understanding than I ever thought was possible of myself. And I'm like, oh, what's that? I, like, I, I wanna like kind of um, peel that apart more. And so I feel like that's been happening for me. And I've been on a couple of different journeys with that, both with myself and with groups. So, um, uh, okay. So hold on just a second, then I'll ask you a question about the coaching side. I heard all those words you just said. I just asked you a simple question Are you fully alive? No, not, not yet, not, not nearly. <laughs> Thank you. Then this would be a place for you to come and play around your full aliveness. Like when I asked you the question the first time, you started giving me questions you're asking. What is my purpose? What am I up to? I was asked to actually asking you a somatic question. If you just drop into this now moment and feel your body through and through, are you fully alive? Okay, so that'd be one thing we're going to play with. And my sense of you is that could be fun for you and terrifying at times. And then the question, the other question would be this, like I have profound respect for therapeutic modalities and being a therapist. And, but you would be interested in this if you're going, huh, all those things that I learned, I've, they're in my toolkit, I like them, I use them, but there's something else that I'm wanting to be able to experience with my clients, whether individual or groups, Mm -hmm. um that my training hasn't supported me to get to that's what this would be that's yeah i feel like that was exactly what i'm thinking and feeling and you put it into words mm -hmm. so um yeah i just I, like again but i don't have the formal training or experience actually directly coaching that's leaders. fine that's fine yeah, okay. that'd be fine yeah. don't worry about that we've had other okay. therapists who who yep. they have therapeutic training and we're gonna just, for the program again, we're gonna want you to follow our model and therapists sometimes have a few challenges getting rid of some of their therapeutic um, listening skills and their therapeutic. So we'll be pushing out all that out for mm -hmm. the year. And then, you know, you can do it on the, with your, with your clients, whatever, but um, some, of, some of them get a little frustrated with that part that we're gonna not value the same skills that you value sometimes as a therapist. Yeah, well, I, I see that as the point, right? So um, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And sorry to bore anyone who didn't really need to hear all of that explanation. Thank you both so much. <laughs> You're not responsible for my boredom. If I'm boring myself, I'm boring myself. You didn't do it. That's another thing you're going to learn in this program is no one else is the cause of your experience and you're not the cause of theirs. And we're going to be ruthless about that. And if that's not easy to grasp, you're going to be in for a ride. <laughs> Just notice this fear come up in me. I, I remembered from doing the intensive coming back and I did this huge friend call. Because I just, it was just like, I was so clear on what I wanted in my world. And now I'm listening again, going, I'm going to live alone in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's professional. <laughs> like, that just, like, came up um, for me. And it's exciting and um, terrifying at the same, same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good on you. It's good to be terrified and excited. Uh -huh. Those are wonderful energies. And I've yeah, used beautiful. a lot of the intensive stuff. Like this morning, I had one of my team members jump in the drama triangle, and we had a clown and a monkey and a fiery, <laughs> you know, hoop. And then we had the lion tamer. And it was just it's such a gift um, uh. <laughs> to work with a team where we get to play so, so mm. much. So, yeah, I'm feeling really attracted to what the coaching program mm. has to offer. So thank you. Mm, you're welcome. Uh, thank you. Yeah. One of the questions we'll ask is, what are you willing to put at risk for your full aliveness? And uh, 
I, in my own journey, have just in this year been willing to be alone. So I took me up until this point to finally really get willing to be alone if that was required for my full aliveness. So you make sense to me that that's terrifying. It's been terrifying for me too. Okay, any other questions? Things you want support around before we... I just wanted to, to um, first of all, thank Jenna for your question because that really is what I'm <laughs> sitting with. For me, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when and a ripeness question. like. Of, you know, of something that I can tell in my whole being that I want. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I was capturing it as I'm reflecting. One has to do with the provocativeness and being willing to like be called in and call, you know, and call in others and like really kind of sit in the fire, being in a space where we have the capacity and the, the excitement around that. One is around wanting to feel more alive um, something else wanting to experience, um, and, um, I just want to make sure if there's anything else I, that was, is useful to be being present with myself in around the timing question. And so I'm curious, um, if there's anything else that you've noticed about what makes it the, the, a ripe time, um, if there's anything else to add and you may have already covered it and if so totally fine I don't know you really well Karen but I'm starting to get to know you over this last year and over here I think you're very ripe and ready <laughs> so uh, whether you decide that's but you're uh, you're like exactly in this in the right place to be here and I see you as a that's my set. I mean, I just want you all to know that, like, I literally, like, for fun, I watch your videos. Like, for me, that's like a fun <laughs> time. It's like, you know, so, so thank you. I, I do have one more question that's not related to the training up uh, for to the certification to this program. And I don't know whether I should just email offline because I want to be respectful of everybody's time because I know it's late. Um, it's a logistics question? No, um, just one of the things that I, as I've been sharing your, the 15 commitments and as I'm learning them and, you know, I love what you said about the activist world. So I work in the social justice world. So there's, a, you know, some of these commitments are easier for people to get on board with. And some of them they're like, you know, talking about systemic oppression and race, you know, it's like, there's a lot of, I'm assuming there's a lot of pushback that you've been holding about it. And I was just curious if there are any, videos or resources or any places to go to your responses about holding the complexity of this with the with all that you know the the way the world well interesting i say the way the world is which mm. <laughs> have a good laugh about that the way that we experience that people's perception of how the world is and oppression so anyway i'll pause there because i think you're nodding i think you already understand what i'm trying to say it's a it's a, it, i get it it's a very challenging conversation and so first and foremost you want to be mindful of where is the person when they want to have this conversation because a lot of it's coming from below the line and there's no answer you'll be able to give that will be satisfying mm -hmm. and so to be yeah. mindful about that and then um we do have a clip of Deb did a really beautiful job at some training of responding to this somebody. And uh, I'm, I think we have that clip somewhere that might be found, fun to pull out. Um, Great. But, and would that be something that I should reach out to you, Liz, to get, or like, where's the best place to find that? Are you going to blast it to everyone and I'll just be patient, which is totally fine too. Um, I don't know. I'll check with the team to see if we can easily find it. And if we can, I'll send it to you. And if we can't, I won't. Okay. And, um, and also we do have something on our resources page on conscious activism. Great. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not. I haven't. I will find it <laughs> and enjoy it. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you so much. Great to be with you all. All right. I think we're feeling complete. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you watch this and you weren't able to join us and you have further questions that are really important for you to get answered please reach out to liz at conscious.is and she can uh, see if we can get those questions answered for you all right you all. Hi, everybody hi everyone so much